teaching program webinar this evening. Okay, let's get started. And our agenda for today, I have a little bit of a delay here. Here we go. Our agenda today is uh, day two, chapter three, time tracking, chapter four, running payroll, chapter five, security and multi user, and followed by our QA. Starting with Chapter 3, we will be setting up time tracking, enter time, print time sheets, invoice time and expenses, and productivity reports. Let's begin with set up time tracking. QuickBooks lets you track the time an employee, subcontractor, or owner spends on each job. Once you enter the time, you can use the information in several ways. Invoice the customer for actual time worked on jobs report showing the time spent on jobs, use the information to prepare employee paychecks. Okay, set time tracking preference. Turn on time tracking and set the first day of your work week by setting time tracking preferences. If you have QuickBooks Premier Enterprise Solutions, you can also activate invoicing from a list of time and expenses. Let's go to that preference. Uh, we're on our home page. And to set our preferences, we go to the edit selection on the menu bar, preferences. We're a little slow today. In the preference window, select time and expenses. Company preferences, do you track time? Yes, and we want to create invoices from a list of time and expenses. And that's how we will set our preferences. With that, when we set our preferences, when you open the invoice icon, you have the option of invoicing for time and expenses or creating invoices. To enter time, QuickBooks lets you track the time employees or subcontractors spend on each job. The time can be used to pay employees, pay subcontractors, and invoice customers. The weekly timesheet and also print timesheet, and these are the paths. Weekly timesheet, invoice time, and ex oh, excuse me, no, nope. no. Nope. Need my full page. And enter time. Use weekly timesheet in your employee center on the home page. Choose your name and your week. We are going to go to week of December. 31st, 2018, and we travel into the future. We'll choose uh, Clark Mitchell. And I had already pre-populated these items here for Monday, Tuesday, three hours, Thursday, seven hours, the service item of excavation, supervision, and floor framing. These items will reflect on the invoice. And the payroll items, which are concrete, masonry, and carpentry, uh, which will show on, on Clark Mitchell's paycheck, uh, which is um, that item shows a pay rate. So if it's a $15 pay rate item, he will be paid $45 for these three hours. Okay, save and new. And we'll close. Now to print the timesheet, let's go back. Go back to that date, that particular timesheet. To clerk. Okay, to print. Choose the uh, print option on the menu bar just above. 
and we choose whom we uh, timesheet that we would like to print, and we just would like to select Clark's. Okay. Oh, we need to change the date. Be sure to um, pay attention to date ranges um, when generating anything really to print or enter in transaction. But here's your print uh, screen, which you would see on most of your print options for uh, most transactions. Okay, we've covered our timesheet and our print timesheet. Now, next what we want to do is invoice time and expenses. QuickBooks Premier makes it easier to invoice for time and expenses by setting a preference, which we just did previously. Uh, if we want to invoice for a time, what we will do is go to the home page and invoice, invoice for time and expenses. Because we set that preference, we now have that option available. Shameless plug. But also a um, feature that is available in QuickBooks, which can be very useful. Let's continue. Okay. Here we're going to invoice for time and expenses. Let's choose that um, December 31st date. And let's choose Heather Campbell. I like to pick on Heather. Okay. We also would. Um, me to choose, let me select specific billables for this customer job. So it gives us a little more um, latitude in what we would like uh, placed in our invoice as to, in, in terms of time and expense. So let's create our invoice. Okay. There, now we have an invoice and it's populating with the information pertaining to that timesheet. Uh, this is the choose billable time and cost. So we're going to choose the timesheet that we had entered for Clark Mitchell on 1231. And this is the time here, the excavation of the three hours, and that's the only thing that we're going to bill at this time. And it populates in our invoice. We want to print. We can print this later. We can email it later. Print or email now, which is on the top bar here of the invoice. Let's save and new. Okay, now that we've invoiced, uh, what we can do is run a report, and these reports will help us uh, track our time by name report. Uh, oh, it looks like Heather has um, credits that can be applied to this invoice, which we're not going to apply right now. Okay. Now we have time by name and report. We have time by job detail report and job profitability detail report. Time by name report is in our report on the menu bar up above and we want to go to jobs, time, and mileage. And time by name. There we see Clark Mitchell and his activity and the time that he had put into each job. We can, we're going from, we want to go to, the 31st. And there's our three hours for Heather Campbell. Yeah. 
the next report, which we will um, generate and review, our time and job detail report. And here's the report here. Let's go to the 31st, reflect that transaction. And here it is here in excavation. Here it's broken down by per service. And there's Mitchell's for three hours. And our last report, job profitability detail report, Again, reports, jobs, time, and mileage, job, job profitability detail report. And we're going to use um, uh, look into Heather Campbell, customer job. All transactions for Heather. Pretty comprehensive, detailed report. Let's see if we can find that three hours in this report by customizing the date range. Nope, I don't see it. Looks like it's showing the cost and the revenue rather than the hours. Okay. Nice. I um. I suggest that if you have time to run reports and review them, these become very valuable, especially for your, um, your supervisor, your boss, the owner of your company. Those reports are invaluable when it comes to um, uh, making decisions, uh, managerial decisions, uh, financial decisions for their company. So those reports, uh, are um, a, a great tool, a great skill to have when it comes to um, accounting and bookkeeping. Okay, let's move on. All right, let's move to Chapter 4, Running Payroll. Uh, we're going to create paychecks, print paychecks, print pay stubs, pay liabilities and taxes. Uh, we'll go over Tax Forms 941. We don't have that um, feature available to us, but we'll, we'll just run through the path and then reports for payroll. Okay, let's create a paycheck. Uh, if using a payroll schedule, um, it's a slightly different uh, path than it is if you are not using a payroll schedule, but it's really quite simple and um, not uh, too complicated or difference between the two. Okay, payroll center. On the home page. That's why we don't, we, we can't do the form 941. Still populating. Okay, what we want to do is uh, hit the pay employees um, tab. Yay. There it is. Okay. Uh, when we choose the schedule payroll, this would uh, say start schedule payroll, but I had uh, started the payroll earlier just to ensure that everything would run smoothly uh, when we got on the webinar. So we're going to resume the schedule payroll. 
in the employee center. Okay, we're in the enter payroll information and what we will do here is uh, check the hours, verify that the hours are indeed correct and uh, that they are. Um, we can continue. We'll show the paychecks here. We can open the detail for each paycheck by double clicking the name. And we have for Clark's, these are his uh, item names for his earnings for each payroll item. There are other payroll items in this window, company summary, what their deductions may be or their costs, and then the employee summary on this window. And this looks good. So let's uh, save and close. And now we Everything looks good through verification. We're going to print paychecks on a check stock or handwrite and assign check numbers. Uh, let's print paychecks on a check stock and we will create the paychecks. Now remember we have Mitchell Clark. Chris Pepper and Adelaide Prentice. Now this window here is um, a great window for printing checks if you only have uh, a couple of checks. So we can either hit print page checks or if you have numerous page checks, what we would do is go into the file menu which QuickBooks won't allow me to do right now because this window is open. So let's print these paychecks. We have three. We're going to choose them. Our first check number is number one. Verify that that is correct. Verify that your checking account, your bank account is correct. Choose the checks you would like to print then hit OK. And print, standard print. We went over the print window a few chapters back. I don't think my printer's on. Okay, let's cancel that. Okay, let's go forward to uh, starting an unscheduled payroll. An unscheduled payroll is um, just a little different uh, in terms that we enter the um, hours manually and we also uh, enter the date to show which week that it, we would like to pay. It could be some, um, maybe a temporary employee, just someone who's not on the schedule. Uh, so we will choose the 31st. Okay. 
and licks. Okay, and we're going to go to the sixth. And we'll pick Rand. Jen is not on the scheduled payroll, so we will choose her. Continue. It's because we, that notification was on there because we only choose Jen where there were hours for that week with other um, employees. Just a little warning that QuickBooks gives us a little heads up. Okay, here's Jean. And contributions, gross pay. This is like a detail. And it's showing that she has no hours. So let's put in some hours for her here. And she did some design. And the rate is 15. Customer job. She was for Heather. Service item. She did plans and permits. And let's save and close. What can you calculate? Okay. Save and close. No earnings or addition items on the earnings and additions items are all zero. Let's go back and see if this will work. My apologies for this confusion. Go back and see if we can choose another employee. I think perhaps it was the date that was showing uh, the zero hours. For Chris Pepper. Let's just hit continue. and then create paycheck. Okay. That's how you create a paycheck. There are some details in there that were off kilter due to the data that QuickBooks had already pre-populated. I'm going to go forward. I'm a little uh, skeptical in the process in which I had just entered this. If you have questions about this, let's get back to it and um, ask me the questions and I can answer it uh, through our support or through this Friday. This can be um, some of the issues that can occur when you're using a sample company. Uh, there is data in there that you're not aware of, and it can cause a little bit of um, confusion. But we have the payroll here, and I'm uh, grateful for it. Okay, so we did the start unscheduled, and we did the start scheduled payroll. So let's move on. We created the paychecks. Apologies for this delay. Okay. Um, and we can print the paycheck. So you can print a paycheck while reviewing it in the paycheck window. And this method works well if you're printing only one or two checks, which we went over in QuickBooks. And if you're printing several paychecks, you can use the file menu on the menu bar under print forms and then print paychecks. Let's see if we have some in there to be printed. We do. Excellent. 
choose the bank account. Is it the correct bank account? Check number and OK. And that's the best window for uh, numerous checks and selecting standard. And for printing, let's, let's cancel this, pay stubs, you would follow the same path to print forms, but hit pay stubs. And there we have quite a few pay stubs. Choose um, the pay stub. We can preview the pay stub, check date, and then close. Print, email, and then close. I really like the email option. Uh, going green, doing paperless, that's, uh, that's a great option and uh, a way of the future. Okay, our next category, paying liabilities and taxes. When you create paychecks, QuickBooks calculates taxes for you and calculates due dates based on your payment schedules. QuickBooks shows the due dates for the payments and warns you when your liability payments are overdue. To pay taxes and liabilities, they make it quite simple. We go to the home page and pay liabilities. Right there on our home page in the employee center. Choose your pay liabilities tab on top. Choose your liability that you want to pay. And here's the check for the liability. Uh, choose your verify your account. Uh, pay to the order of, and there should be, that should be pre-populated um, with whomever your agency is that you pay to. So we have 1250-280 in payroll liabilities, and we have no expense. Now the expense tab you can use for any type of late payments. I had, um, I had a pre-populated federal income tax. and withholding. You, you can double click it or hit view pay. And here we have it okay, back to this original check 1252.80 in withholding social security company um, and employee. Strange it says zero. And we can add expenses, say it's a late payment fee, so we can do an interest expense and recalculate. What am I putting them out there? 55. Okay, now we can recalculate at 1307.80. Save and close or print and mail. I'm not going to record it. Okay. The process of 4941 is the employer's quarterly federal tax return. That is your, um, your payroll tax report that you file to the IRS. Where we would find that is in home page under process payroll forms. This version does not have this, uh, this feature. So we won't have it to look at, but what you would do is um, it would set up an interview uh, and fill out the form and then send the form. And I believe there is an electronic setup that you can send directly to uh, the IRS, which is very 
very convenient. Okay, now what we're going to do is um, go to a couple of reports for payroll. We have a payroll summary report and review job profitability detail report. Again, the reports are in the menu bar. We want to go to employee payroll and payroll summary. Oh, look, here we go. Mitchell, Clark Mitchell's activity in payroll from October 2018 to 12-15-2018, uh, which is uh, the final quarter in 2018. And our report is a job profitability detail report is under the jobs, time, and mileage, job profitability detail. And we're going to choose Heather's, uh, which we ran this report uh, just earlier in the last chapters. And here are the details. Count cost, revenue, and difference. Great report. Okay, let's move on to Chapter 5, Security and Multi-User, uh, Multi-User in QuickBooks. I will set up an administrator, a user, and uh, using QuickBooks in multi-user mode, and we'll take a look at the audit trail. Multi-User in QuickBooks. To use the QuickBooks in multi-user mode, you must install a licensed copy of QuickBooks on each network computer. The company file should be located on a shared resource, like a server or hard disk that can be accessed by all users. The first step is to designate one user as the QuickBooks administrator. This one person has unlimited access to all of QuickBooks. The administrator is the only person who can add new users, change a user's access privilege, import and export data, change company info and preferences, set and change the closing date and password, create portable company files. And as you can see, those asterisks are showing that a user is set up as an external accountant can also perform these tasks. To assign an administrator, uh, we would go to the menu bar and company setup. Company and Set up users and passwords, set up users. Okay, here's our user list. Right now I have, it's just me, admin, and I am logged on. But if I would like to uh, edit this, change this, double click. And then we have the admin, uh, enter a password, confirm the password, and then uh, set up using the challenge questions. That uh, window should open up as well when you open uh, QuickBooks, when you uh, first install or open a company. Okay, to add a new user in Pro and Premier, we would use the same path as we did the admin, uh, and you would come to this window. We would use the Add User button and uh, follow through. Um, let's say, Jenny, password. Selected area of QuickBooks, all areas. Now, if we use selected areas, there will be a questionnaire um, that will continue through, um, say, selective access, create transactions only, create and print transactions. And this answers a question that we had a couple of weeks ago of um, 
what the users are allowed to um, access in QuickBooks. And let's say that Jenny can only create transactions. And then next, uh, purchase and accounts payable, checking and credit cards, all these areas. Um, if she allowed in the inventory, no access. Most, um, all situations that I personally have been in with QuickBooks, I have been allowed full access to QuickBooks. Um, that, of course, may be different in other companies. Okay. So then we would add that user, and when that user signs on, they will have a uh, logon window with their username and their password. Enterprise Solutions has a slightly different setup as they have users and roles. Um, that, is, um, that is available in Enterprise Solutions, and of course Enterprise Solutions is for rather large uh, companies um, where this would uh, prove advantageous to their needs. Okay, now using a multi-user mode, QuickBooks works in two different modes, single user and multi-user. Multi-users can access the company file in multi-user mode, and single user mode, only one user can access the company file at a time. Certain actions are permitted only in single user mode. These actions include some types of changes to lists, change company preferences, create or work with accountants copy, condense or rebuild data, import or export data, create portable company files, and adjust inventory. Uh, to switch to multi or single user mode, menu bar, file, and then switch to multi-user mode if you're in single, or it will say switch to single user mode when you are in um, multi-user mode. Okay, next we're going to the audit trail. Now, an important part of accounting is tracking which transactions have been added, changed, or deleted during a period of time and by whom. QuickBooks provides this information through the audit trail report. I have used the audit trail report um, quite often in my positions where I needed to know what transactions were entered after a closing date which affected the P&L. We had closed our books every month um, on the last day of the month, so if anything was entered after I closed the books, my P&L would change when I would um, go to do my P&L in the next month. That way we can track it and say, okay, what changed here? So the audit trail proved to be quite valuable um, in that aspect. And where we would find the audit trail, and also you know who made or deleted um, or edited what transactions. We would find another accountant in taxes and the audit trail. The audit trail lets you know who entered what, um, what was changed, what was edited, what was added, and what, what was deleted. And here's our audit trail, showing here that a bill was entered by the administrator on 12-15-2018 at 8.27 in the morning. And these is, this is the name that was uh, entered in this transaction in this bill, uh, what was entered on the memo, the account, uh, if it was split, and the amount. I'm trying to see if we have any... I don't see any edited. Nothing here is edited. Usually, if something is edited um, or deleted, it will show uh, in, in bold black. Okay, let's stop that. Okay, that's the audit trail. And it looks like Albert Cruz has a plenty of items listed. Hmm. Okay.
Okay, that's the audit trail. And here we are, we're at our Q&A. Um, I hope that was helpful, and uh, my apologies for that paycheck section. Uh, that kind of may have been confusing. So, of course, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them clearly and concisely. Uh, yes, I believe we do. Okay, here's a question from Linda. Don't you have to put the number of hours in next to the rate of $15? Yes, they do have to have uh, the number of hours. If there's only one hour, I would assume that uh, you wouldn't have to put uh, the hours. Uh, the rate would just, uh, it, it would just automatically show one hour. But yes, you are right. You do have to put the number of hours in there. Any other questions? Okay, I don't see any questions. Uh, we can take a look since we have a minute. Oh, there's a question. Okay. There is a place for a signature on the timesheet. Is this an electronic signature or does this need printed out or signed? There is a, um, you have to print it out to sign it. There is an area for electronic signature that you can set up um, in QuickBooks when you do your online um, your online banking and credit card banking. Other questions? Okay, we have a couple of minutes here, and I don't see any questions. Let's go to Linda's question about the um, payroll. So what I'm going to do is go home. Well, this might be painful because it's running so slowly. Oh, too slow. No question. The question is, I think this is why it didn't populate for you before you had the rate of $15 but no hours entered. I just wanted to verify. Okay, let's take a look. Mm 
Okay, we have our name, our rate at 15, and our hours at 20. Okay, there's our check. Looks good. One ninety seven sixty is our check amount. Let's take a look at that in our payroll our print paychecks. Print forms paychecks. No, it's not in there. Maybe because I canceled it and didn't continue. Oh, here we go. And then create paychecks. We have Jean and Tim. Okay, we don't have time to. Well, this is bookkeeping at its finest. We have an item that is on a negative amount, which cannot be on a paycheck. So you would have to research that item and say, okay, why do we have a negative amount of net pay of minus $2,000? That I did not enter. Um, QuickBooks had entered that into the sample. So perhaps if you have a couple of minutes, uh, take a look into that and see if you can figure it out, do some investigating, and uh, see if you can fix that problem. Okay, that's great. It's actually a, a pretty good opportunity, a, a good challenge. Okay, question. Uh, okay, Linda, you're welcome. Okay, do we have any, um, any other any questions? We're at 6.48, we're getting close to an hour. Um, we're at good time right now, and I don't see anything coming up. Uh, I hope you're grasping this and you're enjoying the time. I hope you're finding some uh, challenges, and uh, also take a look at your um, exam objectives and uh, review that and, and uh, see how you're doing in um, accomplishing those objectives so when you take your test, uh, we will have success and celebration. Okay, QuickBooks thinks I have a question. I do not. And uh, neither do you guys. So um, have a great week. And if you have any questions during that week, you can reach me at um, metricsmentor at gmail.com. And if you have any um, tech support that you need to get on to the webinar, or uh, through any of your um, applications, uh, just give support at metricslearning.com. And uh, we'll, we'll see you and talk to you on Friday at 1 o'clock for our uh, live chat. And uh, it's been great being your mentor, and have a good week. Bye.